we're going to speak in the book. Uh, I'm going to speak to you about the question, are you a saint or, or are you a sinner? Because you know, a lot of Christians, people say, well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. And, uh, but is that correct? We'll find out. We'll find out. I'm going to, we'll, we'll do a little pre-test and then we'll do an after-test. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1. Yahweh, we just come and ask you to direct our sermon. Direct the sermon. Speak through this unworthy vessel, your holy word. And let it be like an arrow shot by an expert directly to every target that you have chosen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 1, verse 1, Paul is writing to the Philippians from prison. And it says, Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ who are at Philippi with the bishops and the deacons, grace to you and peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, a 10-year-old granddaughter was hanging around with her grandma. And the 10-year-old, very precocious, she says, Grandma, how old are you? And Grandma said, well, honey, when you get to my age, we don't share that information. <laughs> so she said, well, you can tell me. I won't tell anyone. She said, well, you just go and play. I'm going to cook dinner. So she went to She thought, hmm, it's quiet out there. So she went looking for the 10-year-old, and she found her up in the bedroom. And she found Grandma's purse out on the bed, and she was now holding Grandma's <laughs> driver's license. And she said, Grandma, you're 76 years old. She said, well, how do you know that? She said, because I took the day you were born and I subtracted it from this. You are right, honey. I am 76 years old. And the girl kept looking at the card and she says, Grandma, you got an F in sex. <laughs> I think that's cute. She's a female. You get an F male. Okay. What kind of say? So sometimes you don't want people to know things about us. About us. He knows everything about us. But I want you to know what God wants you to know about him. And that's what's really so important. Just like you know, I, every time that goes by, I, I have heroes in the faith out there that I, I'll read A.W. Tozer and Raven Hill and some of these men of God, George Whitfield, that have gone before. And when I read the stories, I read them, I think, these guys were so holy. They were such men of God. But then when you listen to their own testimonies, they're running themselves down and they're struggling with their own sinfulness. Are we saints or are we sinners? And then that's the question. I have my moments where I'm really walking strong, you know, and I feel like I'm walking in the anointing and everything is going good. And then you drive with me. Now, I'm not a road rage guy, but I'm not the most patient driver. And I'm always talking to drivers. Ah, come on, come on. Hey, the light ain't getting no greener, you know. Peggy will tell you this. Sometimes I find myself getting angry with myself because of my impatience. So the question is, Steve, am I, are you a sinner? a saint. Which are you? As we see here, how he writes the saints that are at college. They were bond servants. So at the outset of the letter, you see their servants. He didn't say, I'm Paul, the super apostle. Timothy, the Lord, a superman of God. He didn't say that. There was a about it. And again, Paul was writing this letter from prison. He went around, he started churches all over Asia, and then he would write letters to them to find out what was going on. And people would bring things to him. He has someone named Epaphroditus who comes and brings him news. And he's basically waiting there to meet Caesar, not knowing whether or not Caesar was going to find him guilty or not guilty. But while he was there, the Holy Spirit orchestrated it that people could come and go to him. And we know that when he did meet Caesar, he did not deny to the Lord and Savior. Caesar had him be all the apostles, Matthew, Mark, or uh, 
well, probably Mark, I don't know, but Matthew, the original, so the 12 died martyrs, except for the Apostle John, and that was not for lack of trying. They actually tried to boil him in oil, but it didn't kill him. And so they put him out on an island in exile called Patmos. There is where he had the encounter with Jesus, the revelation, where he saw down in the book. So, but the question is, as you read these things, what are we? What are we? I mean, there's no perfect churches. There is no perfect churches out there. As a matter of fact, there's a joke out there. You know, people say, well, how's your ministry? Well, the ministry's great, but uh, the people aren't. <laughs> yeah, the ministry's great, but I don't like the people. No, that's not very nice. But you know, people are hard to deal with because we're stupid. You know, we do stupid things. So the question is, what are we, saints or sinners? Just depends on what you ask, I guess. Listen to the poem I heard. To live above with the saints we love, oh, that will be the glory. But to live above with the we know, that's another story. Even with the greatest Christians in the world, there are challenges in life. And I think what the Holy Spirit wants to do for us today is he wants you to know biblically who you are in Christ. Who are you? Because I've had people say, no, we're just sinners saved by grace. Is that correct? Or are we saints that sin? Here, I'll give you some choices of what we are. If you find yourself continually beating yourself up over your sins, you're probably, you probably view yourself as a sinner. If you're constantly beating yourself up because of the shortcomings of your life, you're probably saying, I am such a wretched person. If you find yourself continually ignoring your sins as if it doesn't matter, you probably view yourself as a saint. The biblical answer to saint and sin questions, saint and sinner questions, can also, uh, will also cause you to think rightly about Christ and what he's done with you and for you. So as Christian people, we are in Christ Jesus, the Bible says. When we give our lives to Christ, we come to Christ as a sinner. We see ourselves in the end of our sins. We realize that there is no hope for us unless on Calvary. And once that happens, something happens in your life. You change. So the question is, am I a saint? Am I a sinner? Am I a saint and a sinner? Am I a saint who sins? Am I a sinner who tries to live saintly? Let's ask some of these questions. He writes to the saints. Who are the saints? Are the saints those people like Christopher and Peter and all these super saints that people think that somebody has to canonize you into almost godlike status? That's not what a saint is. He's writing a letter to the saints, which means those who are set apart. Set apart ones. And what set them apart? It was the blood of Jesus that set us apart. So he wasn't writing to those who have been deified. He was just writing to those who had been saved. So if you've been saved by the grace of God, I could write a letter to this place and say to the saints at empty tomb. And I should reach those who are believers in Christ. I could say to St. Steve, St. Matt, St. John, St. Sarah. But you don't have to throw that in front of it. Every believer is a saint as a result of experiencing the grace of God. The word saint is used 66 times in the Bible. I think that's interesting. And it's another name for being born again. There's 66 books in the Bible also. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2 says, To the church of God, which is at Corinth... I should say the church of Yahweh, that is at Corinth, to those who have sanctified in Christ Jesus, saints by calling with all who in every place call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. By calling the Christians in Corinthian saints, Paul forever refutes the idea of saints being holy. Just don't walk on water. Saints aren't perfect. They are set apart ones. And we are called to be saints of God. We are saints when we come to Christ Jesus. Here's some things that saints are. Psalm 16, 33. You don't look them all up, but you can write them down if you want. Those saints are those who God delights in. 
Daniel 7, 18. Those who possess Yahweh's kingdom forever. Romans 8, 27. Whom the Spirit intercedes for. 1 Corinthians 6, 2. Who will judge the world, the word says. The saints will judge the world. 1 Corinthians 16, 1. Saints will take collections for the poor. 2 Corinthians 9, 1 and 12. We minister. We minister to the people. That's what saints do. We minister. What does that mean? We feed them. We clothe them. We pray for them. We help them. We do the things that you would have someone do to you and for you when you were in that same position. Paul says we do to the least of our brethren. Saints are those pastors and teachers who equip the saints. Saints are... Those who we pray for. I pray for you guys every day. I pray for every one of you folks. That Yahweh would use you in such a way that your lives will shine light to those in darkness so that they will come to the truth. And they will see your light and come to their light. Step out of the darkness. So the saints are very true. They're Christians. That's who they were. They're Christians. So what is a saint? First is your holy position. And this is really important. The Greek word translated saint is from the term that means set apart and consecrated for the purpose of Yahweh's service. That's what we are. Consecration is a sense of being dedicated, devoted, exclusively set apart for his purposes. Now, some people in the church, saints, do not live that way. But that's how we're supposed to live. We have been washed in his blood. He said the blood of his his son Jesus shed his blood for our sins so that we should live our lives totally for him. He lived his life totally for Yahweh's glory. Yahweh said, go down, give your life. Your blood is the only blood that can be shed that I will accept as a ransom for your sin. Who can help them? If Jesus would have on the road and he had full choice, he had a free will, if Jesus would have said, you know, Father, they're not worth it. They're not worth my blood. None of us could have ever been saved. But he didn't do that. He did exactly what he came to do. He obeyed the will of the Father. And we should do no less for Jesus. Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, now I send you. But just as Yahweh the Father sent you, Jesus is now sending us. Jesus. If you are a saint, you are one who has been sent. Set apart for the very purposes of the Almighty God. I don't know if that's how you look at your life, but you should. We're not sinless. We're not a defiant sinner, but we're set apart for Christ. The Greek word saint comes from the Greek word for holy, set apart, like Israel was set apart above all other nations. That's what we are. dropped on my heart the other day as I was praying about this. In Christ, positionally, we are in perfection. In Christ, positionally, because we're in Christ. When you become a believer, you're baptized into him. You're in Christ. Positionally, you're in Christ. If you die in Christ, you're going to be with the Lord. So, in Christ, positionally, we are in perfection. But, experientially, we are being transformed from glory to glory. The process of our sanctification. So we go through these things in our life and he's making us more and more like Jesus. He's setting us apart. And it's a process. It's a lifelong process. The non-Christian is the word saint to describe these elevated people. But Christians, we just realize it's just us. Nothing special. I'm not special. I'm just a follower of Jesus. But I have been set apart. In his eyes, I'm special because I'm one of his own. I tell people all the time, has anybody told you that you're special to the Lord today? Because you guys are special to the Lord. You're his. Not everybody is his. He has a chosen people. And if you're his, you're special. But in the, in the scheme of things... We're just people. You're set apart from sin to holiness. Set apart from Satan to Yahweh. Consecrated exclusively to Christ alone for his fellowship and for his service. 
You now belong exclusively to Christ. You belong to him. I mean, that's what, that's the way I look at my life. My life is not my own. I belong to Christ. He's my king. He's my savior. I can't make choices for myself. He's the boss. I can't tell you what I'm going to be doing tomorrow because I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow. Jesus could say, you're coming home today. It's not up to me. What's going on over in the world, all these things that are going on in the world? Jesus is not out of the loop over there in Ukraine. He knows what's going on. He knows everything that's going on. He's never out of, out of the picture. So you've been set apart. So as a saint, even your problems take on a different focus. As a saint, you're not to think about all those trials that are weighing you down. If you're a saint, then your problems are actually, they belong to Yahweh. My problems are not my own. I can say, man, Lord, you're going to have to get me out of this mess. I'm your problem now. Anything that bothers me is his problem because I belong to him. If something's going on with my children, it's my problem. That's the way I look at it. I try to fix a fixer. I always try to fix everybody's problems. I can't fix everybody's problems, but, but God can. So when I have a problem, I turn it over to him. I'm, I'm one of his. I'm a saint. <coughs> and I say that very humbly, because you're a saint. Your life is now his. My life has been hid with Christ in God. So what am I? What are you? When you're a saint, you belong to Christ. That's what you've got to remember. Second is how you, the practice of your life. In the New Testament, the word saint is also translated sanctified, re referring to the process of becoming like Christ, talking about your spiritual birth. So positionally, we're in Christ. But then we have this process where he's changing this new creation, this new creation of Christ. When you come to Christ, if any man is in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. You're not the old self anymore. You're a brand new person. You're in Christ. You're a new believer. You're a new... Isn't that awesome? So as a new person, now you begin this process where you start learning to be more like Christ through life, life's situations. Ephesians 5.3 do not let immorality or any impurity or even be named amongst you as is proper among the saints. And there must be no filthiness or silly talk or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know with certainty that no immoral, impure person or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance, inheritance of Christ and our God. Then your behavior, your practice will be different. It's just going to happen. When I gave my life to Jesus, something happened. I did change. I had a long way to go. I still got a long way to go. But there was a big chunk that changed in my life. He changed. He gave me a new heart. It's like I wasn't the same guy. I didn't think the same things. I didn't have the same desires. I didn't have the same goals anymore. Everything changed because I was a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's good news because if you've lived like the devil all your life and done terrible things, washes that. The Bible says, your sin and he casts it as far as the east is from the west, remember it no more. He don't hold no grudge. I firmly believe that when I gave my life to Jesus, I killed Steve to death. I really do. And then became the new life. So even though I look 60, I'm only 35. Thank you. <laughs> Been saved for 35 years. As a saint, everything you do now should be for Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.15 He died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose on their behalf. Philippians not selfish uh, from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. 
So when you go to school, you go to school for Christ. When you go to work, you go to work for Christ. When you have children, you raise them for Christ. When you are a child, you obey your parents for Christ. When you drive, you drive for Christ. When you do your homework, you do your homework for Christ. When you do it for Christ. Whatever you do, we do all things for Christ. Everything we do should be for Christ. And there are people out there that know these things and they live this life. And they touch people's lives because they don't live for themselves. They're not living for the tears of this world. They live for Christ. So saint means you have a holy position that works its way in practice. So we're in Christ Jesus, that's your holy position, but the longer you stay in Christ, the longer you walk with him, he begins to change the way that you think. When he changes the way that you think, he changes the way that you act. He changes your life totally until you're not the same person. Because you're person. As a saint, you are set apart and consecrated for the, pur for the purposes to live for Christ. God call you when what should we call you? How can God call us saints when we continue to sin? That's the question. To answer that question, I have to ask you another question. What I am once, what am I once I am saved? Say that again. So if you make a mistake and say does that change that? No. You know there's a difference between sinning and being in sin? I can say something, think something, I got to do something wrong, I lose my temper, I can out. Whatever it is, I can think the wrong thing, I could think an impure thought, that's sin. There's a difference between that and, ju and jumping into sin, choosing to be in a sinful situation. There's a difference between sin and being in sin. The people of God cannot be in sin. When you're living in a situation that you know dishonors God, you need to come to that place where you say, Lord Jesus, I am so sorry for living the life that I've been living. Forgive me. I've married some people because they heard messages like this down here and they were convicted and they decided, you know what? We're not married. We need to, we need to get married. I've told people, listen, if you're living with someone now as if she's your wife or he's your husband, if that's the one you want to spend the rest of your days with, great. If it's not, then split. Because our relationships also need to be pleasing to Christ. Everything we do should be for Him. We're made new. If any man is in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so that's the good news. But Paul the Apostle says later in, in Romans 7, he says, you know, there are things that I do that I hate. The things I want to do, I don't do them. Is Paul a saint or a sinner? I can see the, 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 the wheels are turning. Paul was a saint. Paul is a saint. He's still alive. God calls us saints. But what I want to get through your head is Once you're in Christ Jesus, positionally, you're in Christ Jesus. But I read somewhere recently that when you are in the world, before you come to Jesus Christ, you're working in the field for Satan. He's your boss. He's your taskmaster. And you're doing what he wants you to do. You're living for him. And then somewhere along the lines, you heard the good news about Jesus. And you came and you repented of your sins and you turned your heart over to Yahweh and you went on the other side of the fence and now you're, you're working for him. No longer in that field at all. You're in this field now. But sometimes even when you're in that field, you can still hear that voice of that old taskmaster trying to call you. Hey, hey. Trying to get you to do some of those things that you used to do. Try to get you to talk like you used to talk, act like you used to act, walk like you used to walk. But you're in Christ. But sometimes we hear that old voice and we stray that direction. And then you get convicted by the Holy Spirit and you beg his forgiveness, but you're still in Christ. You didn't cross that road back over again. You guys just have to remember that you are saints of Christ. You are in Christ Jesus. And I want you to know that the me that I see is the me that I'll be. 
The Bible says, as the man sees himself in his heart, so he will be. If I see myself as a sinner just saved by grace, I'm just going to go through life just clunking around, screwing up every chance I can, messing up everything I put my hands into, because I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I don't see that. I see that I have been set apart by God, that I'm a saint according to God, and you're saints that sin, that make mistakes. But you're not sinners saved by grace because that sinner saved by grace is gone. You are saints that still sin once in a while. And you know, the Bible says when you're in Christ, we don't sin. That's your old nature that's doing the sin. But that doesn't mean you can't cross that street. You know, there are people out there that say, once saved, always saved. But I knew a guy who said he got saved when he was 12 years old, so he left that field to go to this field while he was over in Vietnam. He was checking out the prostitutes and doing all the things and trying to tell me you're saved. No, 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 you, you crossed the street. You went back into that other world, into that other kingdom. If he would have died in that sin, I don't believe he was saved. He didn't like that. But after coming to some Bible studies, he came to me about two months later. He said, I think I realize what you're saying. I wasn't saved. I just came forward. But now I'm giving my life to Christ. So what he was saying is he never did cross that bridge, never did cross the street. He was always over here. And there's a lot of people going to church on Sundays this morning all over this city and all over this country. They're still over here serving Satan. They've never even got over here. Why? Because nobody ever told them they were a sinner. And so if you're not a sinner, why do I need a Savior? Over here, they're telling you, oh, it's okay, you're living in sin. Ah, that's all right. Jesus loves you anyway, and Jesus does love you. He loves you enough that he paid all and spent all his blood on the cross for you, but he, doesn't, he didn't do it so you could stay over here. He did it so you could come over here and live as saints of Jesus Christ to serve Jesus, honor Jesus, glorify Jesus, have you been saved? Have you given your life to Christ? Have you repented of your sins? Have you said, no, I am not going to be that same person anymore. Lord Jesus, come into my heart, save me, set me apart, wash me in the blood of Jesus, and I'm crossing that road, and I'm in Christ Jesus, and for the rest of my days, whether I live for an hour or I live for a hundred years, I'm going to live it for Jesus Christ. And someday when I leave this earth, this should be your prayer, I'm going to see him face to face. And Jesus is going to take me after I meet him, after it takes me about four months to get off the feet, holding on to his feet, just weeping, crying. Then he's going to take me and say, hey, I want to introduce you to my dad, to my father and to your father, to my God and your God. Won't that be something? But which side of the street are you on? Have you come to Christ? Are you a saint that sins or are you a sinner? Still, if you're a sinner that you, you're chosen to live in sin, you're living in sin, you're living contrary to what God has called you to live. I've done it. Every one of us has done it. But when I came to my senses, when he got my attention, he called me to a different life and I crossed that road and I stay on this path. This is where I live. Do I still hear that old voice calling me in? calling, tugging on my heart once in a while, getting that old frustration, sure. But I'm still saved. I'm still set apart for his purposes. And my plan and my desire is to live for him. I, that's why I read his word. I stay in his word. You have to do that, guys. When you're on this side of the road, then your life is his. And so it's so important for you. Over here, you're living for your flesh. So over here, you've got to feed your body, you eat, you know, and all these. Over here, you've got to eat too, but your food is spiritual food, and that's reading the Word. It's going to church. It's hanging around with people who are going to do you good, people that are going to encourage your heart. Starting this Saturday uh, at 6 o'clock here at Empty Tomb, we're going to start up the New Believers classes again. Lonnie's going to be doing them with Israel, so this Saturday... If you're a new believer, even if you're not a new believer, but you want to get some more teaching, come this Saturday at 6 o'clock. 
and we want to teach you these. We want you to learn things. Every other Saturday or the first and third Saturday of every month at the thrift store, there's a men's group. I've been having this men's group with some of these people for 25 years. Great studies. And we're sharpening each other. We're feeding each other. We're, we're growing together. That's what we have to do as Christians. So the question is, how many in this room would say you're a saint? How many in this room would say you're a sinner? George is saying, huh, I don't know about this. I come up from the Baptist background, and I know they always say we're a sinner saved by grace. But you know what? And I'm not picking on you, sweetheart. But you know what? Biblically, that's not really what it says. Because he wrote, he wrote to the saints at Rome, to the saints at Corinth, to the saints. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. So what we are, biblically, is we are saints that make mistakes. We're saints that sin. Meaning I say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing. It's not like I'm up there holding up banks or anything. But none of us are ever going to be perfect until we see him face to face, until he makes us perfect. So the question is, am I a saint, am I a sinner? Am I both a saint and a sinner, or am I a saint who sins? That would be the proper answer if you were going to get graded in my school today. In conclusion, you say, okay, Steve, the Bible teaches me that I'm a saint who, who sins. I no longer have an old nature. I, I'm not that old person anymore. I'm no longer controlled by sin, but why do I still battle? Because, like I said, that enemy is just always going to... The Bible says the flesh wages war against the spirit. And that old flesh is constantly going to try. The enemy is going to use every temptation he can to pull you and try to get you to make mistakes. Because, you know, honestly, when you make mistakes, when you do things, sometimes you hurt other people's faith. You can't hurt other people's faith. But there is no one perfect in this world. I'll let you down. Every man, every woman will let you down somewhere because we're not perfect. But Jesus will never let you down. I promise you that. Now, what about you guys that say, I'm a sinner, uh, not a saint? What do you need to do? You need to turn to Christ today. You need to turn to Christ today. You see yourself as sinners. And so the only hope for you is, is that you would come to Jesus today and have your sins forgiven. One reason some so-called Christians never overcome their sin is because they've never been saved in the first place. And that's my biggest fear. My biggest fear is that there are people who go to church every single Sunday and sing how great thou art and just as I am, but they've never been saved. They've never repented of their sins. And so when this whole thing's over and separates the sheep from the goats. He's going to send them over to the goat side. But hold it, Lord. I went to church. Yeah, but when I was hungry, you never fed me. When I was naked, you never clothed me. When I was in prison, you didn't come to me. When I was a stranger, you didn't invite me in. Lord, when, when did we not do these things? And he'll say, inasmuch as you've not done it unto the least of my brethren, you've not done it unto me. Being a Christian is not belonging to a social club. It's becoming a new creation in Christ where the spirit of the living God himself comes to live inside us and he begins to change your life and you begin to fulfill and continue the ministry to the poor and to, the, to those outside. The Bible says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins. If you've never repented of your sins, you're not saved. Weather's going to turn good. We're going to start putting the, the water out. If you've never been baptized as an adult, you should be baptized. If you want to, really want to be saved, repent of your sins and be baptized. Believe that you're dead to sin. Again, it's what you know about yourself. What I know about myself is that I'm dead to sin. Me, this goofball, I belong to Jesus Christ. You have to see that as your, your truth, too. It's the truth. It's what Jesus has done. It's not what I did. It's what he did for me. All it is is walking in, in truth. We need to walk away from sin, and we need to practice holiness. You can't do that until first you come to Christ. Confess your sins one to another. If you confess our sins, he's faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
We need to be accountable to godly people. You need to know people that are believers that you can come to and say, you know, I'm struggling with a certain sin. I'm struggling with this. I need some help. I need someone accountable. Yesterday at our men's group, we were talking, and one of the brothers said he had a, a friend who used to be one of his mentors, and this guy had been struggling in his past with pornography. So he asked this guy that he mentored to become his accountability partner. And he, on his phone, there's an app out there now that if this guy goes to any sites that are not good, the other guy's phone's going to say, hey. And he'll call him and say, hey, what's going on? Oh, <laughs> cool. I think it's cool. It's accountability. But what I'm saying to you is God has called you to be a saint. He set you apart for his purposes. And I think that the person that you see that you really are makes a whole lot of difference in the person in the life that you live for Jesus. If you see yourself as a defeated person, broke down, just barely getting through by the skin of your teeth, that's what you're going to be. If you see yourself as a, as a person set apart for the kingdom of God, as a vessel that he can use, God will open up doors for you to go to places, to preach in places, to pray for people, and that's who you're going to be. Because that's what he's set you apart to be. His vessel, his child, his servant, no longer your own. So, a saint set apart for his purposes. Now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, you can. I told you how you could do it. Some of you in this room, you know, listen. I can tell you right now, if I dropped over dead, 100%, I'll go be with Jesus. No question about it. I, just, I got no fingers crossed. My toes aren't crossed. There's no hope. I got it. I'm in. I'm saved. I'm on this side. This side goes up. This side goes down. Which road are you on? I know the road I'm on. Now, can you say 100% that if you dropped over dead today that you would go to heaven? And if you think you're going to go to heaven because you're a good person, you're still on this side of the road because no one's good enough for Yahweh. Nobody is good enough to earn heaven. The only way that I could be saved, because I'm sure not good enough, but I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. And he's cleansed me with a cleanser and there's a brilliance of white that, that has made me clean and made every true child of God clean. And that cleansing will send you right into the kingdom of, of glory. If you don't know 100% that if you died today, you would go to heaven, I want you to take just a minute and ask Christ to come into your heart. I want you to take a minute and ask Christ to forgive you of your sins. I want you to take just a minute and say, I'm not sure. Maybe somebody told me something that wasn't true. I want to know for sure that if I die today, I'm going to be with Jesus forever because you can know the blessed assurance. You can know of a certainty that heaven is your destiny and it's only through the person of Jesus Christ. You can't get to heaven through Buddha or Muhammad or the Virgin Mary or Joseph Smith or anybody else. The only way that you can get to heaven is through the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. So let's just take that minute. I'm going to let you do that yourselves. Just take a few minutes and speak to, speak to Yahweh. Speak to Him. Just say something like, Father, forgive me. I'm so sorry for sinning against you. I'm so sorry for the life that I've lived. But I heard today that if I would sins, if I would come and give my life to Jesus Christ, that I would be a creation in Christ Jesus. That old person will be gone. Old things passed away and I will become like new. I am new in Christ Jesus. If you make that your prayer. And in your heart that's your desire. Welcome into the family.